Well, our nonstop coverage of their Burning Your Money Week continues with our next guest who says government spending will only worsen the current very fragile economy. Republican Congressman Ron Paul joins us on the phone from Clute, Texas. Congressman, I know it's a drastic step, but do you think we're at the point where we need a constitutional solution to stop the deluge in government spending? Oh, it would be great, but nobody cares about the Constitution, so I don't think that's going to solve the problem. The other problem you had, even if you had a constitutional restraint, you would still have the Fed. Just remember, the Fed pumped in $2 trillion off the budget. You know, they just created the money and passed it out, and they can give money to foreign governments and foreign banks. So the problem is much bigger than having a uh, legal or a constitutional limitation on what they can spend. I think it would be a good idea to make the point, but that's far from the solution. The solution is what the people in this country think our government should be doing as long as they expect – this much from their government that we can take care of everybody in the world and that we can have a welfare state here you're going to have this problem no matter what the constitution says because they already totally ignore it now congressman you of course have been quite vocal about your calling for the fed uh, to be non-existent basically so i'm just curious what you think would have happened had we not had that first round of quantitative easing at the height of the financial crisis we would have had more bankruptcies, and if, we, if the Congress would have just kept their hands off, uh, the whole program, the whole correction would be over by now. But because we uh, took it over, prevented the liquidation of the debt, this just delayed the inevitable. I'm not opposed to spending. It's just I'm opposed to government spending and the Fed spending. We want more spending, but that means you have to allow the people to have more money and the business people to have more money. The spending has to come from them. But once the government takes over the spending, the only way they can do that is distort the markets further. And that's what the Fed does, and that's what the Congress does. But, yes, it would have been a rough year, but it would have been over by now. Mm -hmm. I think all the liquidation we've done. Now, with this mortgage scandal going on, that's further delay. Everything they're doing is delaying it. And you want, you want the uh, liquidation to occur. The people can't afford it. They have to give in, and it has to go to somebody else who can't afford it, and the prices have to go down. But this is what we did in the 30s. We propped it up. We wouldn't allow the market market to clear the market. We, we, we didn't believe that these corrections were necessary and that politicians can't stand the idea of not doing something. Well, speaking of politicians, Congressman Paul, we've got about three weeks for midterm, uh, before midterm elections. Uh, is there a consistent message out there from those on the right that would support curtailing spending? Well, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I think uh, everybody in the Tea Party movement would say, yes, we want to curtail it. But, uh, you know, the Tea Party movement actually originated during the last presidential race, and they understood where I wanted to cut, and that was every place. The Tea Party movement now has a lot of people in here that are picking and choosing. They say, well, yeah, we should cut this, but not that. Uh, so we have a ways to go, but I think it's very, very healthy. I think uh, the consensus in the Tea Party movement is to cut. I think there will be some more debates on exactly where to cut it. All right, Congressman Ron Paul, many thanks.